What's cracking, everyone? My name is Ryan, aka Steve23, and this is my tech and audio channel. Today, I'm doing my first headphone review on the Dan Clark Aeon 2 Noir. Now, this is a planar magnetic closed back headphone. In fact, it's my second closed back headphone that I own, and uh, I'm going to tell you about it today. I'm going to start with a few things around build quality. Obviously, going to talk about sound. Um, many of this is subjective, and then uh, I'm going to finish and wrap it up with uh, whether or not I recommend this headphone. Spoiler alert, I absolutely do. So let's get into it. First of all, what I'd like to start with is around build quality. Now, the Dan Clark Aeon 2 Noir uh, honestly is a very well-built headphone. Um, you know, good clamp force, but not too clampy. Uh, very lightweight. Uh, I want to say somewhere around the range of 320 grams. Uh, didn't get my scale out to measure those, but I'll pop that down in the video uh, to be sure. Uh, the pads, very comfortable. Uh, there's no cup swivel or anything to the pads, uh, but that's okay. Like I said, they are very comfortable. They are that egg-shaped uh, form on the pads. The headband itself, again, adjusts, you know, really nicely up and down as you need it. And it stays on the adjustment that you need. There's no sliding or anything as you're putting them on your head. Um, to be honest, I did have a little slight discomfort when I first wore them. That went away really quick though. I've heard uh, of others having that same problem. Um, since I am talking about them, I will put them on my head so you can kind of take a look at how they uh, sit on the head, which Again, I have a big head, as I said before, so they sit pretty nice on my big head. Now, as far as the other parts of the build quality, um, honestly, these are just made super sturdy. Uh, I don't notice any kind of um, things that I would caution as a possible defect um, in the future, wear and tear, things like that. These, uh, these are really solid. The only thing I would say about these uh, for those that are you know, really cautious about fingerprints and that sort of thing. Yes, these are fingerprint magnets. Uh, had them cleaned before I started this video and by the time I'm through this video, they're gonna be probably pretty uh, smudgy with fingerprints. So power requirements wise, I'll start with that as I said. So I have been powering this with my uh, Jotunheim 2 uh, from Shit uh, Audio and then I've been using the Modius for my DAC. Um, Jotunheim 2 for the amp, obviously. Very solid uh, amp DAC combo for this particular headphone. I've been listening only on single ended because I'm still waiting on a cable that I ordered to come in for XLR, so I haven't really been able to listen to balanced version at all. Uh, however, it sounds very, very good on single ended. Uh, no problems at all there. Also, uh, for purposes of the review and for myself, um, I've been using this dongle DAC that I've been just kind of holding on as I've been talking here. Now that was uh, plugged in through my phone so that I could listen it through my phone. And I gotta say, I was impressed by how similar it sounded compared to my Jotunheim 2 as far as running it through my phone. You know, I did have to boost the volume almost to max on my phone and that to me is not even loud. Um, you know, I'm very cautious about how loud I listen to my headphones and my ears. And I will say that, uh, you know, they, they sounded good, uh, very, very good on my phone. So the fact that these are considered a portable headphone, um, big thumbs up for me. They definitely are. You can listen to them on your phone, obviously on my amp DAC here. Uh, I did not try them on my laptop. Uh, however, I would imagine that would be perfectly fine as well since they seem fine on my phone. For reference, in case it matters to anybody, I do have the new uh, Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. Freaking love that phone. Uh, they sound good on that through the dongle. And so speaking of sound, let's go ahead and get right into it. So I'm gonna start with on the low end. So as far as bass goes, you're gonna get some bass out of these. Now it's gonna hit you in the, the low end of it. Um, the extension's very good with this particular headphone. Um, you're not going to get a rumble, I wouldn't say, uh, it, but it's got that planar base. And if you don't know what I mean by planar base, you will if you get a planar that extends well in the base region, which these absolutely do. Uh, you know, you're going to feel it. 
Um, there's tracks that I will mention here that I will put, uh, you know, in my link of what I listen to, but I will say Wiz Khalifa. If you uh, pull up his song, On My Level, it's an older song, apologize for the lyrics, so is what it is there, but man, does that extend in the bass, and that is one that I would say you almost feel that with Noir, does it very, very well. Uh, very good example there as far as bass extension goes um, down low. I have no complaints there. I don't consider myself a bass head as much as I used to be when I was younger, but I still do enjoy bass, and this is done very, very well. Absolutely no complaints in the department of bass. All right, so now let's talk about the mids. Now, this is a point of the headphone that I would say uh, does sound very good. Uh, it extends through the mids just perfectly fine. Mids to me is a lot of vocal presence. Um, you know, a lot of wood instruments and things are going to be through the mids. Uh, this sounds very, very good on the mid range. Uh, there are some vocals that are just very, very present. I wouldn't say in your head present, like, you know, this area region as far as mids go, but you are going to hear it really well on this headphone. Now, to kind of go along with that, uh, but not obviously the same thing, I would say when it comes to dynamics with this headphone, um, you know, the punch and slam that you hear about uh, when it comes to headphones, it's a planar. It, it doesn't have the punch and slam that you're gonna get of a, dyna a dynamic driver headphone. And this one probably is even a little weaker on that end than I would say, you know, some other planars that I have heard, uh, especially for being a closed back. Now, because I'm saying that, that doesn't mean I wouldn't recommend this headphone to listening to uh, genres that are going to hit you. You know, think of rock, think of metal, things like that, rap. Um, just because it doesn't hit you doesn't mean you don't still get that, uh, I guess, that uh, you know, full sense of the mids that you're going to get out of the headphone. Uh, you're still going to get it with the Noir. Uh, I do still think it sounds very, very good in that range. I honestly do not have a complaint other than the dynamic part of the mid-range. Okay, well, that's gonna bring me to the treble region then. So when it comes to the treble and the highs, here's what I would say about this headphone. I am not as sensitive as I used to be when it comes to the high end of tones um, and you know that, that peak range. This headphone can be a, just a little bit, um, I guess I would say sharp, spicy, you know, whichever you wanna call that, on the high end of the trebles to where I have heard and seeing some use the tuning pads that come with the Dan Clark Noirs. Personally, I did not need to do that. I like the sound signature of this headphone straight out the way they come. Uh, the highs do not pierce me as much as what I have seen some talk about. However, I would say that there are songs that I hear it. Uh, there is that ever so slight, almost sibilant sound every once in a while on a vocalist. Um, but again, I am very careful to not call it sibilant because I've heard sibilant, Bayer Dynamics are sibilant, this one is not. So I would just say that, you know, if you're scared of that factor, you can use the tuning pads. Uh, I know, um, I wanna say the white pads uh, definitely can tone that down some on the high end. I tried that, didn't need it, um, just because I didn't wanna take away any of the other factors of the headphone of the sound signature. So take that with a grain of salt, use how you want when it comes to that. But personally, I found treble to be pleasing enough and definitely to be present. Um, detail retrieval, all of that was very good as well. All right, so that's gonna bring me to the next part of the sound signature, which is gonna be the stage and imaging. Um, sound stage, honestly, for a closed back headphone is pretty darn good. Um, I was impressed by you know some songs that I listened to. I listened to some live performances uh, that sounded very, very good when it comes to stage. Uh, when it comes to imaging, um, you know, the song that comes to mind uh, that I use all the time is Letter uh, by Yossi Horikawa. And uh, I would say that, you know, imaging was very, very good on this. I didn't get that kind of three blob sense that you hear about on uh, some headphones. It definitely panned uh, and did everything it was supposed to do there when it comes to imaging to where I could see where all those sounds were coming from. And just, you know, it was just an enjoyable experience to just sit back. Uh, and enjoy the imaging of this headphone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I would also say, since I am gonna talk about imaging and soundstage, uh, that I have been gaming with these. Uh, you know, I'm, gaming is another thing I'm very much into doing. Um, Elden Ring right now. Um, spoiler alert, these did not make me get better at Elden Ring, which, 
you know, I'm going to write Dan about that. I mean, I, that really should improve my gaming experience, but I mean, come on. Anyway, so yeah, I, uh, these sound very, very good for gaming. Um, however, me personally, I prefer an open back any day of the week when it comes to gaming. So uh, these do have stage, these do have imaging uh, for a closed back. It is definitely, I would say, decent to good, uh, but just better on an open back and more of my preference. Now, obviously, if you're wanting that isolation and uh, being able to block out the outside, then heck yeah, I recommend these for gaming if you're going to use them uh, for that reason. All right, so the last thing I've kind of prepared on this uh, to kind of wrap things up is a, a pros and a cons. Uh, obviously, subjectively on this headphone for me because uh, so much of this hobby is subjective. So from the pros end of things, I would say, you know, this is a high-end closed back headphone for under a thousand dollars. And in fact, $899 is what uh, this headphone goes for. If you compare that to other high-end closed back headphones, I mean, this this punches right up there with an excellent sounding headphone, excellent tuned headphone, in my opinion, for that price. To me, that is a pro. Um, there's excellent detail retrieval, without a doubt. Uh, I mean, I have no complaints when it comes to the uh, detail retrieval of this headphone. Um, the extension of the base, as I said before, gets down low. Uh, the extension of the base is definitely something I would call a pro on this headphone. Again, not to warn anybody that doesn't like a lot of bass, you are not going to get that, you know, overbearing sense of bass, you know, just drowning out the rest of the music. Uh, that is not going to happen with this headphone, at least not to me subjectively. I really don't think it'll happen to you either when it comes to that. Um, vocal presence is very good. Uh, this is a headphone that, uh, you know, I really enjoyed listening to vocalists on this headphone. Uh, any kind of track that was more vocal focused, you know, I found myself kind of kicking back and listening to it and really enjoying it, especially if it was a vocalist I enjoyed listening to. I think you're going to definitely enjoy that when it comes to the vocal presence of this headphone. Again, can get a little almost to that sibilant level, depending on the vocalist. Not so much that it attract me away from enjoying the experience. Um, stage for a closed back is very good. Imaging for a closed back is very good. Imaging in general is very good on this headphone, both pros in my opinion. And then the tuning pads. Now this is a little, you know, can, debatable I suppose on whether you call that a pro or a con. Uh, me personally, I did not need to use the tuning pad, but I like the fact that they include them in the package that you can simply, you know, you just slip them right in the cup. Uh, whether it's the white pad, the black pad, you know, they got the different kinds. Honestly, should have them out for this video. I apologize that I don't, uh, but I've got them put away um, in the box with everything from Dan Clark that I got. Um, not Dan Clark personally. He doesn't know me that well, except for Elden Ring, man. Come on. Anyway, so uh, I don't have the, obviously, some of the accessory pieces out, so I apologize for that. But I still call that a pro because, uh, you know, it does give you the ability to tune your headphones without having to EQ as much. Um, if you don't want to get into EQ, you can use that as kind of your, um, I guess, physical end of EQ, if you want to call it that. Cons, I would say, even though I put this on a pro, I'm going to put it on a con list, and that is the price. Simply because if you are in the market for a new headphone and you're looking for something high-end, closed back, depending on the price point that you came from, $899 could be a little steep. Uh, so I would say that is a con just depending on what you're looking for in the price bracket range. I personally think, as I said, that these are worth it, but everybody's opinion of price is very subjective. So that is why I'm going to put that also on the cons list along with the pros. Uh, then connection, barrel connection, even though the cable itself is very, very good here the barrel connection, I've had no problem with, they stay plugged in very nice. Um, it, it is a nice connection. It's also not the most universal experience, so you are going to have to probably put some extra money in if you want to uh, go a little bit different with your cable routes. So, um, you know, you're going to have some different cables if you want to do the different balance, single-ended, uh, whatever experience you want to do with that. Also, the length of the cable, honestly, for a portable headphone, is pretty long. Um, in fact, I am not a super tall guy. But uh, this gives you kind of an idea. I mean, they're still dangling off to the sides here. This is a pretty darn long cable. 
I suppose you could call that a, I apologize for the noise there, I suppose you could call that a con, considering the fact that these are considered portable and you got a long cable, depending on which way you look at that. Uh, then I would also say just the sound stage again, you know, because these are a closed back, you don't have that big open sound stage. So if you're looking for that in a closed back, just, you know, you'll be satisfied with this. If you've heard other closed back, want to compare to it, that's maybe a little more closed in. This is still going to be a little more closed in, but the stage I think is still good. And I know I kind of sound like I'm contradicting myself a little bit there and I am and I apologize because the stage is good for a closed back, but stage in general is still not going to compete with something on an open back uh, side of things, just in my opinion, from what I've heard. Uh, and then the power requirement would be the last thing. I will say that uh, when I plug these into my Jotunheim 2, uh, I could actually crank that volume dial up uh, almost to, I want to say probably one, one or two on there at least. Uh, to listen to them at good levels and some of my other headphones don't even get anywhere near that so obviously these can take a little bit more power for being portable you know that could be questionable you know why you need that much however like I said on my phone at least for my use case I was perfectly fine but it was almost maxed out so if you're looking for a portable side of things and you want to get the best of the best sound out of these um, just know that you may need a little more power to drive these than what I would say is more of a portable solution. Uh, of course, if you have portable DAC amp combos out there, this is more than likely going to pair perfectly fine with those as far as a power requirement goes. And so with that, I am going to wrap up this video. I would highly appreciate if you would like to give me a like. If you enjoyed this video, definitely do so. Um, if not, that's okay too. I'm going to get better at these things. I promise that. Also, uh, just started my channel, so go ahead and click subscribe there if you want to see future videos as they come out. I'll be doing some previews on some things upcoming here soon, as soon as I can get around to it. But for now, I am going to get back to playing some Elden Ring. And Dan, I mean, really, call me. Uh, we can make this happen. I can become Elden Lord, I know, with this headphone. Right? Right.